Just over a year ago, Kelloland's Angela Kennecke returned to work after the overdose death of her daughter, Emily. Making such a personal loss public wasn't easy, yet Emily's death has given Angela a new mission in a foundation known as Emily's Hope, which was designed to stop the stigma of addiction and get more people into recovery. As you are about to see in Angela's own words, a lot has been accomplished in the past year with your help. So I think it's best if I just tell my story and let everyone out there know what happened to my daughter because I really believe it could happen to anyone's daughter. It can happen in any family. And it starts with addiction. It was the most shocking thing to yeah. me. Um, needles. Immediately after I shared my daughter's story with our viewers, it was picked up nationally and even internationally. That helped build the momentum for Emily's Hope. The idea behind the nonprofit was to raise enough money to start a scholarship fund for treatment at the new Avera Addiction Care Center which is nearing completion. Throughout the last year, Emily's Hope raised money through a variety of events, including a fun curling event in February. In June, 400 riders turned out for the Emily's Hope poker run to support the mission. Emily's artwork was also featured at an exhibit at the Washington Pavilion in Sioux Falls. And in April, we held the Emily's Hope art show and auction, where local and regional artists donated their work to be auctioned off for the cause. And I said, are there any vitals? I have told Emily's story in communities across Kelloland and across the country. Many businesses have also stepped up and raised money for Emily's hope. <music> to bring attention to the epidemic, Kelloland News produced a one-hour special on the opioid crisis, which received a regional Emmy Award. Then in August, I joined other mothers at a candlelight vigil for those who have overdosed and died. 192 people overdose and die every day in the U.S. It's critical. I mean, we are losing more lives to this illness than we are to just about anything, particularly in our what would normally be our young, healthy population below the age of 50, even more so below the age of 30. The results of our year-long fundraising efforts came to fruition as Emily's Hope presented the new Avera Addiction Care Center with a gift of $250,000 to help cover the cost of patients' treatment. I think these dollars will represent opportunities for so many people, so many people that otherwise would avoid treatment or find a reason not to get to treatment. Giving Emily's Hope to many families for healing and continued recovery. Angela, you've done so much for addiction, for awareness, for reducing the stigma, for raising money, but honestly, I, I wish that was something you never personally felt the call to do. What has this last year been like? Well, you know, immediately after my daughter died, of course, shock, um, sorrow, incredible pain. I can't even put it into words, really, the kind of pain uh, someone experiences when they lose a child. But to lose a child in this way, in our culture where, you know, there's so much shame and stigma surrounding addiction, and especially if somebody dies from an overdose, I mean, I just never could have imagined. We were, you know, within three days of holding an intervention for Emily and trying to get her into treatment. We didn't know what she was using, but we knew something was horribly wrong. Um, she wouldn't admit to us exactly what was going on. Um, I, I could never have predicted the last year and a half, uh, but I, I did make a choice to try to make, take something that is the worst I think that can happen to anybody and try to do something with it to do good for others. I really have felt this whole entire time if I could take the focus off myself and put it onto others, on helping others, on making sure, I mean, it's still there are other parents obviously going through this. We, last weekend someone was buried from an overdose. I mean, other families are going through it. But if we can, if we can lessen this for families, if we can change hearts and minds, you know, that helps me and my grief as well. You know, I know you, you said that you had to make a lot of choices really fast when you weren't in a state to be making choices and you decided to go public with all of this and do all of these things. Did it, has it really helped you? Do you feel better or is, are you just doing what you can do to get through? I think, I think doing what I can do to get through. You know, I think one of the things I really thought was when we presented that big check, you know, to Avera, and I did not do that alone. We had the help of... You know, I've been on Kelloland Living talking about our events, Kelloland Television. We've had so many businesses step up and help us. We've partnered with so many different businesses. Uh, so many individuals came forward and did what they could. So it wasn't just me. I had a lot of people lifting me up and helping me along the way. And that helped me too. 
Um, but I really thought when I presented that check for $250,000, I thought, oh, this is going to make me feel so much better. And it was really kind of a hollow feeling. Um, it didn't give me that sense of relief that um, I thought it would. But I think when I, I, I had a conversation with a colleague here, and he said to me, maybe it's just been the journey, you know, the journey along the way to get to this point that has helped you heal the most. And I, and I think that's true when the other people that have come and surrounded me with, with love and compassion and caring and have also um, joined our mission, too. Well, there's just nothing that can take the place of Emily. No. Not a $250,000 check. No, no, no. Nothing that you're doing, nothing. And so I no. can imagine having done all that work and just trying to get through the last year that it, it yeah. feels weird. And I've been really busy. You know, it's you... been a really busy year and, and maybe some of that is running away from the pain a little bit. But, you know, now when I do have those, as when you're, we're experiencing grief, you know, you have those waves of emotion that just wash over you. And I try not to run from that. I try just to if I'm sad, I'm sad. I mean, I just try to experience those emotions and kind of, kind of sit with them um, because that's just what grief is. I mean, you just never know when it's going to show up. And providing that awareness for addiction and reducing the stigma, you're doing it with such a personal firsthand story that I have to imagine is so helpful to other moms that are doing the same exact thing, but you're doing it in such a visible, real, authentic way and in such a pu public way. It is. It's, yeah, it's been, you know, a, a, a bizarre thing, actually. I mean, very unusual. But I do think for the families that have to go through this, uh, they are not alone. I think you feel so alone when you're a family member going through this and you, you, there's a lot of confusion, not knowing what to do and not knowing the right thing to do. And I think the more we talk about it, the clearer it will be on how we can help people. Yeah. And I think once, too, I see people benefiting from going through the Avera Addiction Care Center and benefiting from this money. I think that is what I'm looking forward to next. You wrote on your recent blog... A quote, it isn't the things that happen to us in our lives that cause us to suffer, it's how we relate to the things that happen to us that cause us to suffer. And I, think I didn't say that. No, it's not your quote, but you wrote <laughs> that quote. It was a quote. Yep. A Buddhist nun, she said that. Yeah. And I think you really have been, I mean, from my perspective, watching you really living that where you're just trying to do the best you can with the worst possible situation to help others. And yeah, I always say, you know, we're all confronted with loss and pain in life. I mean, nobody gets a get out of jail card free, really, when it comes mm -hmm. to life. And I think it's how we respond. Um, we have that choice in how we respond. Well, you have, I'm sure have great things in store for Emily's Hope, the foundation, some more. And We're I, not stopping now. I mean, we've got a lot of work to do. I, we've got work to do on other fronts, too, in terms of recovery and education as well. So I can't wait to, to see what you do. And I'm so excited to be here at Kello to get to be part of it and get Thank to work you. with you, too. It's going to be great to see. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank